folks, we kick off the hour. We have markets at all-time highs with the markets catching a bit. Right at 3 o'clock, as I came on the air, we have the S&Ps make it 25 points to the upside. Now, 25 points right now, that's only half a percent because this thing's sitting near 5,000. Nonetheless, you see the acceleration right at 3 o'clock. We push higher to the tune of about half a percent. NASDAQ 100, you're up by 8 tenths percent. Now, not quite over those price levels you had on Wednesday. We come into a week that it doesn't get much bigger for tech earnings. We'll go over some of that this hour. Hour, You get the Dow. I mean, look, the Dow just popped 100 points. You're up 126. That's a third of a percent. You get the Russell up by 1.2 percent. Now, the Russell, well off all-time highs, man. You're still talking about almost what? 400, 500 points, 25% off the all-time highs. Pretty interesting when you look at it in that context. Bitcoin, back to a short-term time frame. We trade higher to 43,450. When we have some action in yields, we have some action in the dollar right now. We have yields dropping. Why not just jump to it? We have crude down a dollar at 76.92. We jump to the 10-year. Whoop. ZN. You have higher price, lower yield. A little bit of a pullback there from that first move, though. Look at that. We made it all the way to 111.22. Eh, two ticks. We're back a bit. Higher price, lower yield. The 10-year sitting at about 4.07. 4.07 is what's happening right now on the 10-year. You jump over to the dollar. Complete reversal from what happened earlier today. Right? It was all strength earlier this morning. And you got to keep your eye on these relationships. Doesn't mean it's always going to happen. But look at the action near the open, man. Something had to reverberate here, folks, okay? When I came on the air at 9 o'clock, what was it, 2056? And I'm saying, hey, you know, it's interesting that it's going both ways because you had dollar strength, and at 9 o'clock you had gold sitting there when, gold, when dollars at 103.64. Nonetheless, you accelerate 103.82. These are dramatic moves ahead of a Fed decision on Wednesday. We get jobs numbers on Friday. We get many of the tech companies with their earnings coming out this week. You jump over to Apple shares. Apple, quite the acceleration this morning, 189.58, just like that. Apple within 76 pennies. Google, 154.81. Google up about two-thirds percent. Microsoft, biggest company in the world right now, up 1.2 percent. Adding to those gains, you jump over to AMD. AMD, down about 56 pennies right now. There are their numbers this week as well, 176.74. We jump over to Meta. Look at this thing, man. All-time highs. Meta up by 2.1%. $8.36, man. I think I pulled this up this morning. If I didn't, it's a one-way trip. Very little selling. You had one moment of selling, maybe in July. I mean, beyond that, can you even find the October lows in the market in this equity, right? You chopped around for a period of time and well above where you were for all-time highs to end 2021 from MetaShares. We jump around to Boeing. So, Boeing. Interesting when you look at this thing on a longer-term time frame, okay? Boeing gets up to a high, and I'm going to talk about Boeing because, man, the article's out there. Do I still have it pulled up this week? Let me see if I do. Yeah, I do, because it's too tantalizing not to talk about, man. Talked about it this morning. This was out early this morning. Updated this afternoon, it seems. Didn't see the update. But nonetheless, Alaska Airlines... They're thinking the most plausible deal is that it basically just left the Boeing factory without the bolts in place that held the door there, which is why it popped out. Pretty amazing, man. Uh, the suppliers of that fuselage, nonetheless, say it showed up with the door and the bolts just fine. Yeah, nonetheless, they're basically just saying that Boeing's not doing their job. Now, longer term, you know, you have to go back here, right? And this is going back to the original problems with the 737 MAX, okay? Excuse me. This is going back, March of 2019, to the original problems when you sell off. Then we hit COVID. Air travel ceases to exist. Boeing especially drops off in pretty dramatic fashion. Now, what did we just do? All we did was we just challenged the 2021 highs, man. So be careful on Boeing shares. They got some real problems, and you actually have it hitting them for the first time to the tune of United CEO talking about literally the United CEO, the biggest carrier in the U.S. that employs the 737 lineup that, that's on hold that's causing them problems. Straw that broke the camel's back. So I would be careful even about 204 on this equity. Is reading that one this morning. It was pretty amazing. Just left the, the factory without the bolts they're thinking. And usually they can see if it's wear or tear, right, what it is. So I'm sure the indicators are that the bolts just maybe weren't there. And they were there at one point. 
All right, let's check back in on that gold contract. Take a little bit of a big picture, man. Gold, you talk about volatility today, man. Gold up to 2056. You're just catching a pop on whatever's going on at 3 o'clock. We'll get into that. You have the tenure continuing, and we have all the expectations coming due down the line for Wednesday in terms of the Fed. You take a little bit of a longer-term picture. Things really accelerated back into October when you had lower price, higher yield. That does not seem to be the case right now, folks, okay? Those recent numbers that we're getting, PCE, inflation, 2.9% handles. Where the Fed is right now, sitting on a level of restrictive policy rate to the five a quarter to 5.5%, I think it's inevitable that this is going to go higher in the longer term. And I think Chairman Powell might have some words to say this, this Wednesday, man, because if it's not March, it's going to be the meeting after March because they're way too high right now with where they are. And of course, the data can change that. And that's what they're going to say as well. But you got to go off the data you have right now. You can't go too far long term. Otherwise, you could say the data could change anything in that in that concept. All right, let's see what else we have moving. Netflix shares extending the gains they got last week up by 1.2 percent yet again today. And they've almost gotten it all back. The Netflix story, the meta story, right? The darlings that got punished, and they've almost gotten it all back to the tune of almost quadrupling their shares, both Netflix and Meta shares, in the span of about a year and a half, which is just remarkable, man. You jump over to NVIDIA. NVIDIA shares up by 2%. Just doesn't stop. 622, you have an all-time high out there of 688. Now, you know, we're going to spend some time later in the program, man, but NVIDIA, okay? Let's zoom in on this. Whoops, so you can see the text. NVIDIA in particular... Their A to B lag of a potential A to B, C to D is so large that you're talking about 800 bucks if this thing completes, man. You had a very small A to B, uh, excuse me, B to C lag. Some of those other ABCs will jump through them. Even the Qs, uh, excuse me, which is the NASDAQ 100. You're talking about 19,400. We're only 10% away from that price level. And that would be a complete A to B, C to D. And that A to B leg, folks, you're talking about from about 11,000 to 16,000. You're talking about a 5,000 A to B, C to D. And we're 10% away. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We're going to talk to our man, Steve Rhodes, when we'll come back after the break. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets.